welcome to DCBA and uh, today I'm going to solve this problem that I had solved previously with moment distribution method and uh, this is type 1 problem if you've not seen that video the link will be given in the description uh, where we have analyzed this beam with moment distribution method and now I am going to construct the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram uh, friends this video is uh, made due to request of many people uh, they wanted to see how the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram is constructed for an uh, indeterminate beam so let's get started these are the values that we got from the moment distribution analysis and shear force diagram and bending moment diagram would be constructed here but before constructing shear force diagram the first step that has to be followed is that we need to get reactions at every point so here we have two four supports two fixed and two roller supports intermediate roller supports and we need to get reactions at all these points so for that we'll solve all the three segments separately that is a b b c and c d so let's start with a b we'll uh, designate the reaction as v a and v b and we'll start a normal summation of f y that is our equilibrium condition summation f y equal to zero so v a plus v b equal to 80 straightforward summation m a equal to zero so i'll be writing the bending moment equation here that is v b into 3 minus 52.91 if you see that then uh, the minus 18.0165 i am i have written it as plus 18.0165 and i have shown the direction as anti clockwise so if if you know my uh, notations and my sign convention then anti clockwise moment i have taken as negative while analyzing the beam in mdm and hence the final answers that i got uh, whatever answers i got in negative were my anti clockwise moment so minus 18.0165 kilonewton meter means this 18.0165 kilonewton meter but anti clockwise so i have written all the uh, directions of the moments as per my sign convention and i, I have not used the negative sign okay so you are writing the bending moment equation vb into 3 perpendicular distance 3 minus 52.91 minus 80 into 1 plus 18.0165 equal to 0 we get vb equal to 38.3 kilonewton and hence we get va equal to 41.7 kilonewton okay now we'll analyze this segment bc again taking our equilibrium condition summation fi equal to 0 vb plus vc equal to 50 into 4 since this is a udl spanning uh, 4 meter length summation mb equal to 0 we get vc into 4 minus 41.402 minus 50 into 4 into 4 by 2 plus 52.91 equal to 0 we get vc equal to 97.123 kilonewtons and vb equal to 102.877 kilonewton then we'll analyze this cd again our equilibrium conditions vc plus vd equal to 40 summation mc equal to 0 so vd into 4 minus 9.303 minus 40 into 2 plus 41.402 equal to 0 i get vd equal to 11.975 kilonewton and vc equal to 28.0248 kilonewton now if you see i have these two values for vb again here two values for vc because b i have this this point b i have in both the segments here it is a common point and this c is a common point in these two segments hence we need to add these uh, reactions both are vb and we need to add them up or we, to, we have to sum it up so if i sum these up i get vb equal to 141.177 kilonewton and if i sum these up i get vc equal to 125.1478 kilonewton so again drawing the beam and as now you can see we have all the reactions here with us including the moments and the vertical reactions and all the supports okay and this is what we require to uh, construct our shear force diagram now let's get started with shear force diagram this is the sign convention that we'll be following for drawing shear force diagram that is we'll be considering a section and then we'll be summing up either the left part of the beam to that section or we'll be summing up either the right part of the beam to that section and when we sum up the left part of the beam the all the upward forces on the left part of the beam will be considered as positive and if there is a downward force on the left part of the beam it will be considered as a negative force again 
all the forces to the right part of the beam that is if i am considering the right part of the beam to this section all the downward forces would be considered as positive and all the upward forces would be considered as negative so this is the sign convention that you need to follow let's get started with sfd taking section under a that this is our first point so we'll start from here and i'm taking the section here so force just to the left of the section now just to the left of this section is basically outside the beam and there is no force outside the beam so it is zero it is equal to zero and force just to the right of the section you see this section i'll be considering the left part of the beam and uh, as you can see from the sign conventions upward force in the left part of the beam is considered as positive so this is upward force in the left part of the beam left to the section and hence it is a positive shear force and we write it as plus 41.7 kilonewton and we plot it so we plot plus 41.7 here underneath a next we take a section under 80 kilonewton force you have to take sections under point loads at all the supports and uh, where a udl starts and it ends okay so at all these sections you need to consider your shear force so after point a the next point is under this 80 kN force and taking section just to the left and considering the beam left part of the beam to this section so again there is no force other than this force so it is plus 41.7 because it is a upward force and there is no other force onto the left part of the beam so again plus 41.7 will be plotting here plus 41.7 now taking force just to the right of, of this section and considering the left part of the beam again now we have plus 41.7 and upward force and also this 80 kN included within this section okay so the equation will be plus 41.7 minus 80 minus because it is a downward force I'm sorry yeah minus because it is a downward force and uh, any force to the left part of the section going down is considered as negative and uh, when we solve this equation we get minus 38.3 so our shear force is minus 38.3 and we plot it here so it goes down okay the up, upward parts up, upper part to this line is positive and the downward parts is negative so we plot minus 38.3 now our next point is the support b so taking section under b and again taking section just to the left of b considering the left part of the beam again there is only these two forces no other force in between moments are not considered in shear force diagrams because it does not have any impact on shear force diagram hence they are not included but there is no other force other than these two forces so our uh, shear force will remain same that is minus 38.3 and we'll plot it then taking force just to the right of the section and when we consider the left part of the beam we have now this force included in our left part of the beam and hence the equation becomes minus 38.3 of course um, adding these two plus 141.177 because it is acting upwards and we get 102.877 so we get a positive shear force 102.877 then we consider our section just under c taking section just to the left of it and considering the left part of the beam the equation will be plus 41.7 minus 80 plus 144.177 and minus 50 into 4 because this 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 force will be included here and it is acting downwards this udl and it is minus 15 to 4 so it gives me 97.123 kilonewton negative so it plot a negative minus 97.123 and then taking section just to the right and again considering the left part the entire left part of the beam it is minus 97.123 plus this force because it is included in the left part of the beam now hence it is plus 25.1478 which gives me plus 28.0248 and we'll plot it it is a positive shear force so we'll plot it plus 28.0248 now taking our section under 40 kilonewton load force just to the left of this section 
now I won't be considering the left part of the beam because it is too uh, complicated to it is I would say too complicated but much exhaustive to calculate all these forces you know sum all these forces up so the much easier way is to take the right part of the section you could have taken the right part of the section anywhere right starting from right here you could have taken the right part of the section whichever is easier for you you consider that way so okay so when i reach here the right part of the section seems to be much easier because there are only two forces but the left part has many other forces so i'm considering the right part of the section and as you can see the sign convention for the right part is downward forces are positive and upward forces are negative so minus 11.975 because it is going up and plus 40 which gives me plus 28.0248 this is my shear force now taking section just to the right of this force again considering the right part of the beam uh, as there is only one force which is going upwards hence it says that upward force in the right part of the beam is negative so my shear force is minus 11.975 and I plot it as minus 11.975 then taking section under D and uh, taking a section just to the right left of D we'll be considering the right part of the beam as there is only one force uh, which is upwards so it is minus 11.975 and taking section just to the right of it the it, it goes basically outside the beam and hence there is no force there therefore it is equal to zero and we plot zero as well and this is my shear force diagram for this particular problem now i'll be drawing our bending moment diagrams uh, you can draw the bending moment diagram for each segment separately that is segment a b b c and c d separately because you have everything that is required here that is you have all the moments all the reactions as well so you can draw the bending moment uh, separately or you can draw it combined whichever suits you but that is a bit more a lengthy method what i'll be showing you here is a shortcut method or a method that is very easy to understand or a method that is very easy to apply and also is less time consuming so before that i'd like to explain you one thing consider this segment a b and uh, here i have shown two moments one is going anti-clockwise and one is uh, the other one also going anti-clockwise but on the other end of the beam this has a magnitude of 18.0165 and this has a magnitude of 52.91 now what happens is if if the rotation of this moment because of the rotation of this moment the, this end goes downwards okay this is basically called as a hogging shape so if my beam end hogs or it goes downwards or you can also see it as a frowning face a sad face then i'll have to plot this particular moment below this line okay if if my end goes downwards then i'll have to plot this moment below this line 18.0165 and if if this particular moment takes my end upwards because of the rotation of this moment as you can see it is going this way so it is going to take my beam upwards this is also called as a sagging shape or a smiley face as you can see so if my end goes up i i'll have to plot it above this line so plus 52.91 and then i'll have to join them okay this is one concept that you require to draw the bending moment diagrams so let's get started with that concept as you can see here it is an anti-clockwise moment and it is going to take my beam downwards at this end it is going to frown my beam or it is going to hog my beam so i'll have to construct it downwards 18.0165 again this moment is clockwise and again this will try to take my beam downwards when it gets rotated like this in a clockwise manner it will take my end downwards so again i have to plot it below 52.91 this will also cause a hogging shape 52.91 so i have already plotted 52.91 here and the check is that basically these two have to be a one line only because both are opposite in nature and uh, both will have a similar impact on the beam so both are causing it to go downwards okay uh, then the moment at this point will also try to cause it uh, hogging shape here and again it will go down 41.402 
then again because of this moment it is going to cause a hawking effect so again it ha I'll have to plot it downwards then because of this again a hawking effect so I'll have to plot it down so these lines have been plotted down and then we'll have to join them okay now the next step is very important all the segments that is segment AB segment BC and segment CD you will have to consider them simply supported and find moment at every uh, for every segment okay by considering the segment AB as simply supported uh, and a point load acting at a distance of 1 meter you might be knowing that the moment is given as WAB by L it is equal to WAB by L and this is how we join it so if I substitute this then I get 80 into 1 into 2 by 3 that is A into B and L is 3 I get it is equal to 53.333 kN meter now this 53.333 is not your final moment value okay this value is basically from this this line starts from this line so but what I need is I need only this ordinate this much ordinate so how can I find that ordinate so I'll have to subtract this much value from the whole thing that is 53.333 I'll have to subtract this much value and how to find this value it is a trapezoid as you can see here it is a trapezoid so from linear interpolation you can find this value it is not very much difficult you, you can find it either from similar triangles you can draw this as a triangle and find this value and then add this much value and you can find the ordinate here and uh, I found it to be 29.648 and then this value we can get an actual moment is equal to 53.333 minus 29.648 it is equal to 23.686 this is my actual moment value 23.686 now we'll consider segment PC simply supported here and uh, we have to now we have to find the moment at this point because uh, wherever my shear force becomes zero my moment is maximum there okay so I found this distance from similar triangles and I found it to be 2.048058 meters it is just uh, more than the center line of this segment that is the center line would have been at 2 meters but this is the 2.058 so we'll find the moment at 2.058 how to find moment for a simply supported beam it is 100 into 2.058 minus 50 into 2.058 square by 2 which will give me equal to 99.9159 kN meters so we'll plot 99.9159 here and again this value is this whole thing right from this line and we require this ordinate so we'll have to subtract this much value and this value again from linear interpolation I get it as 46.989 and actual moment value is 99.9159 minus 46.989 we get it as 52.9268 this is my actual moment value okay now the last segment segment CD again it has a point load a single point load and uh, the moment for single point load for simply supported beam is given as WAB by L and we get it as 40 kN meter again this this uh, value has uh, has an ordinate from the line joining these points so we'll have to subtract this ordinate from there which I get as 25.3525 thus actual moment is 40 minus 25.3525 is equal to 14.6475 and this is my bending moment diagram final bending moment diagram for this particular sum so I hope you got this uh, this is a, a shortcut method you can also use the elaborate method that is finding for each segment separately but it is more laborious and more time consuming so I prefer this method much more okay and as you progress in your civil engineering you will have to use this method ultimately because you cannot uh, waste your time finding bending moment at each point every time thank you so much for watching this video kindly share like and subscribe please click the bell notification icon for more such videos thank you